Hey, hey, thanks for watching Didi Crow with my favorite groomer on YouTube. This video has been requested for many times and I'm finally taking the time to do this. It just takes a lot of time to go through all the tools that I think you all might need if you're starting to groom your own pets at home or if you're a beginner groomer or you're a groomer and you're wondering what tools am I missing and what tools do I need to really do my job. So there's a few different things that you might need to do what a groomer can do or to groom your own dogs at home, which many of you are doing for many different reasons. So I challenge you to push pause real fast and go grab a notebook, paper, pen, and take some notes. And I, I talk pretty fast, so you might have to play this again over and over until you kind of get all the tools written down. If you've emailed me over the last year, I have sent out a very long, extensive list of tools. That tool list does change, just like if I find something very useful to grooming and I might add it to my own tools, I want to update my tool list for you guys. But everything that I use, you might not need everything, right? Because you're not grooming all these different types of animals in different types of situations. You might be just trying to do this certain cut all the time on your pet. So if you've emailed me and we've talked back and forth, I've guided you based off of what your needs are. So. The list I have really goes down to what you need if, if I had never really talked to you. And then if you say, hey, Didi, all I want to do is a really, I want to leave my dog kind of long. Or, hey, Didi, I really I want to just do a shortcut all the time. What do you recommend? So I'll try to stick to the format of all the tools. But a lot of you have asked, Didi, what's on your back wall? Like, tell me what you have on your back wall. I know Renee out there built her back wall kind of like mine. Andrew in California did at that time. He, I would see pictures, he would send me, look at my back wall, and I'd be like, he hung everything exactly where my stuff is hung. So it's pretty cool to see that you guys are using kind of the same tools and the same thoughts that I am. So if you're, if you're following me, you're sharing our stuff, you love what you watch, this is awesome. If you are here just for entertainment because you don't have a pet but you just love my energy, you love being here with me, you love watching what I do, just put this down and just kind of listen because there's so many tools I'm going to go over right now. And this video might be a little long, but we really appreciate it when you watch all these silly ads and when you watch the video all the way through from start to finish. Those help our ratings on our channel. So keep that up, okay, you guys? And share, share, share. So I'm going to cover my back wall. There's going to be some things that are not on my back wall that are by the tub, on my desk, things that are not right here that I still use and that are part of the business in a, in a big way, okay? So maybe I'll skip that stuff for now, or maybe we'll travel to the, the bathtub. We'll just see how it goes. So if you've ever gotten an email from me regarding what tools do I need, Dee Dee, then you may go to that email and go, yeah, that's exactly what she was talking about. So first I'm gonna cover the wall, okay? Then I'm gonna cover the list. So some of those things will be hand in hand, but you'll see the list is really like these are the top you know, 30 or 40 things I think you need to start. If you're going to do any grooming with your animal, you need to start with. So we'll do the wall first. Okay, so here we go. So I'm actually going to take you with me a little bit here. So you can kind of see the back wall in here, right here, if you want to get your phone out and take a picture. And then as we get in closer, you can kind of take notes and pause. Um, this may, like I said, this might be a really long video because there's a lot to cover and I always have some like t tips and tricks to the items that we have. And don't worry about focusing on me, really focus on what we got back here. So, uh, this hook here has tape. Uh, I have, and we'll have this on our website as well because I'm going to start carrying all different colored tape. I learned from another groomer or someone out there, you know who you are, you still watch my channel. Thank you for telling me about this. Get some masking tape or this is Gorilla Tape. Check our website at myfavoritegroomer.com slash shop to support us, uh, buy from us. We'll have everything I'm kind of mentioning on our website to buy, okay? Because why not buy from the per person you learn everything from, if you're here learning from me, that is. I, I don't even ask you for anything when it comes to the education you received on my channel. So when you shop with us, that's kind of how you say, hey, Didi, I want to support you so you can keep doing those videos so you can still make time for doing those videos and take the time during grooming to do the video, right? Because that's how it all works out. That's how we all work together. 
So if you take everything you learn here and you go shopping everywhere else, I'll never feel that, that you appreciated that everything you learned from our channel and then all the insight and stuff. You feel me? Okay. Um, and I always believe in if, if you don't ask for what you need, then no one knows. So if you want us to continue doing the videos, then that's how you support us. You, you shop with us or be a part of what we do and share, share, share and help us grow. That's kind of like a teamwork that we all go through together. So I have to throw that out there because everything I have here, I sell. So if you are wanting to buy something, let me know. If it's something I actually can't get for you or that uh, as a business, I'm going to tell you, everybody you do business with can help you get something because as a business, we register ourselves in so many platforms and pay so many fees for different things that we do. I can definitely get you an affiliate link, just like I did with the Kalulu, uh, the Kalulu pet cover, pet seat cover. So if you need an affiliate link for something big, like I know Rainia bought a sewing machine with my affiliate link. I don't sell sewing machines, but I'm a business. I can get her that affiliate link so I get credit for helping. It's like a referral. So if you need something big and you're going to do some shopping, let me know. I will definitely help you, and I would love to, to get that help too. Okay, so here we go. Let's keep going. I just want to mention that as we go. So if you stop at what you're doing and want to go look for these tools, okay? So your masking tape or Gorilla Tape is going to help you to take out hair stuck in your fingers and your arm and stuff like that, okay? So this does, has nothing to do with your, I don't know anything about your skin sensitivity, okay? Mine, my skin's pretty rough. The next thing down here is I, as you can see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven masks right here. And I have probably five or six masks at home. So let me get to a place where it's a little bit more so I don't have to keep moving this. So have your face mask. Sometimes I still forget them if I go mobile. The other day I had to stop by the salon to get a face mask. Make sure you have some in the wash, some ready. Some in the wash, some ready. And if you hand wash them or wash them in the washing machine, always hang dry them. You want them to last a lifetime. I do anyway. Down here and up there, there's two sections, a lot of muzzles and I'm not kidding you. And on, we don't do any returns on our online store because we're a very small store. Returns can shut the business down if you can imagine. So you really need to know what you want to buy. You can go to international shopping international there's no returns this whole return thing is usa made it's like you buy something and you're like oh i wish i didn't buy this you want to take it back so there's no returns because we want you to get the right thing to begin with so we want to educate you and help you follow through ordering what you really need to order okay very rarely something is dysfunctional is still working so all these different muzzles look at how much money i've spent on these muzzles man i've got about all these black muzzles here are large sizes, big, big, big dogs. Then I bought all these basket muzzles, every size. Do you see me use them very often? No, because they suck, okay? And then I have some random tools here that I don't really use. I'm not going to mention those because I don't use them. I have a step-in harness, and that is for Sammy Davis only. <laughs> That's his specific step-in harness for bathing, um, which I don't think I've used in the last couple times. I have a nail, a regular nail file. Um, I find that very handy to have if your Dremel stops working. You can still finish the job on a Dremel, okay? Regular nail handle. I have, we used to carry these uh, nail clippers. If you ordered any kits when we first started or doing kits for nail trimming, this really hurts your hand. They're small, but it's not designed for, it's not designed well for my hand. It hurts your hand, so I don't sell those anymore. I have one hanging there. I have another one in there. I don't use that. You need your ear hair puller pad. That's essential on pulling hair. It helps you go faster. Your Zoom Groom brush. Zoom Groom brush is for cats. It's for short hair dogs. And this is like a D-mat breaker. A very expensive one. And it's got the... I cut myself really good the other day. Try, it got stuck in here and I pulled too hard and I ripped myself open. I mean, that's how, uh, that's how dangerous they are. And it's like a knife right there. It will, it will mat break kind of just like this one, but the teeth are just different. There's more uh, serrated edge here. It's bumpy. And this is straight. So to a different, a couple different. This is great when you've got the collie or the longer hair that's matted. But it's a great tool like um, Caton, the Caton de Tulier. Okay, have that. Your mat breaker. And all these are sold in kits on our website as well, okay? Hope I can be seen here. My aluminum comb, it's lightweight. I have a 
another one here on the other side. I have two setups. I'm trying to keep them set up that way unless just something happens. I don't have the double over there. Down here below, I have an extra nail clipper that I'm trying out, an Andis. Haven't used it very often. I have another secondary nail clipper. I like to have nail clippers because when it, it's gonna, I have more than other nail clippers. Excuse me. Okay, David, can cut that part out. This is the nail clippers that are in our nail kits now. I use this a lot. It's a, I love how this safety goes up, it gets out of my way. And the spring in there, it's not like this one. I was using this one for many, many years and I would actually open it up and that spring just pops right out. So that was really annoying. You'd be in the middle of a nail trim outdoors and it would just pop right out. That shit would piss me off. So this one is what I've changed to over the, over the last year now, over a year, maybe a year and a half. And I'm liking it. I'm really liking it. I'm really picky. Okay. So down here I have a hemostats, a spare large nail clipper. Large nail clipper is really old, but still functional because I use the small nail clipper a lot more than I use the large. Reason being is that you can do just so much as you need to with the large nail clipper. Or, I'm so sorry. You can do just as much as you need to with the small nail clipper. But the large nail clipper, when you have those massive nails like on a great Pyrenees or something, you really need that power to cut it, not the edger to chisel around everything, okay? So I use both. Hemostats to pull ear hair. You need a pair of pliers. Basic scissors to cut fabric or just random stuff. I'm like, hey, open up a package, okay? Now we're looking at our shears here. And you're just taking notes, remember? You don't need to really see everything. This is a brand new pair of shears I think I'm gonna start carrying. We'll see how it goes with the company. And I'll let you know, I'm trying them out. I haven't used them yet. Then I have a curved shear. Then I have my eight and a half curved shear. My, I think they're six and a half or seven uh, ear shear and thinning shears, which I hardly ever use. I used to use them a lot, but now I just hardly ever use them. Your large bristle brush is what I like to use. The small is too small for me. Ferminator, and I call this a shaper brush. It's real small, it's just for shaping the hair so I can trim it, mostly uh, bringing the, uh, moving the hair from the top of the feet up so I can trim it back. Let me step back here as we go up the wall here. Right here, you should always have ear, or excuse me, you should always have eye wash here and eye wash by your tub, okay? And we have eye wash from Esprit, that's what we sell now. I have my ear, or it's a lot of editing, David's gonna have to cut some of this chip chatter out. Your blade oil, and I always carry something like peroxide, so I have my peroxide here and oil, or excuse, alcohol. Peroxide or alcohol, I don't I gotta do more study on that, but when I cut myself, you immediately want to fix it. I cut myself more than I cut animals. If you nick yourself, you want to immediately disinfect. And that's because you never know what might happen. Just disinfect right away. I always have this is our Pets Life gel spray. We do the uh, gel now, so you can get that. I like to have that by my table. I have one also by the tub. I do have a quick stop here, but you can see it's, it's full. I rarely ever have to use it, but just in case, I have it there. Ear cleaner, basic ear cleaner. And then I have Ocean Spray Bottle. That's my favorite. Rainbow is my second favorite. And these two are filled with uh, leave-in conditioner. Again, we sell everything. This is filled with water. Like right now, I have a little static. I can just spray myself, especially as we come into the winter months. If you have static, just spray that baby around you, around the hair, and continue grooming so it doesn't constantly stick to you. Alcohol, again, for wounds, open wounds. I nick myself a lot, quite frankly. I can't believe I don't nick dogs as much as I nick myself. Cool care and clipper disinfectant. This is when you're cleaning your blades. Cologne, I say cologne, it's such a harsh word. When you think cologne, you think of like, oh gosh, it's gonna smell like hard, rich cologne. It's not, I use a rainforest and it, ta it tastes, it smells delicious. Malacetic otic to ear flush. So you're gonna ear clean and you're gonna ear flush. So I have them right here. You should ha have that also by your tub, the malacetic otic and you, the ear cleaner. I like to have it double. So you try not to have to do too much running back and forth, okay? Random ear, that's, that doesn't matter. I hardly ever use it. Okay, now you have your ear. 
Okay, excuse me. Now you have your clipper. Got my Andis 5 speed clipper. Couple brooms here. I used to have everything in the mobile trailer, trailer and I used to have this station and that station to have a backup. And I just decided to stop carrying everything in my mobile trailer. And then when I pack to go to the mobile trailer, I just pack for that mobile trip, okay? So everything's doubled up. And then I would have another bin set up for outdoor toenail trimming, which I was doing for 10 years with a local veterinarian. So I would have that bin already set up and ready to go. So you'll see I have like a multitude of things. And some of them, you guys, you guys have actually bought them from me used. It's pretty cool. So I have this on a strip now. It's not my favorite thing, so figure out how you want to do it. But the, this, this is so bulky, okay? It doesn't fit the wall and allow me to still plug something else in there. So not very well. So have your strip or extension cord, however you want to do that. Like anything electrical, though, if you have an extension cord, you're, you start to reduce the amount of power going to your equipment. So be careful, you know, how many extension cords you're using and what you're using it with, like a fridge, etc. More muzzles. I've tried these Asian duck muzzles because they're so cute. They're okay, but they will still bite through any muzzle. I have my aggressive face tool. I have my blade cleaner brush. And then we kind of start, there's a few random things over here that are important. So don't let me talk your ear off. So, Dremel and the Andis Dremel, because I was kind of demoing that, okay? A couple different types of Dremels here, nail grinders, okay? I should say Andis nail grinder and the Dremel, because this is a Dremel and that is probably trademarked Dremel. Ear powder. I do most of the ear powder or ear plucking now. Most of it in the bathtub. David mostly does that if he's helping me in the bathtub. So there's ear powder back there. Probably not. This one probably needs to go to the back. And then extra stuff here. Disinfectant. I have uh, Adam's flea spray. You need to have something you, you can hurry up and react. Uh, bin for your cotton balls and Q-tips. And then you have some repetition. You have an 8.5 shear. You have your... See, everything doesn't need to look the same. And then as time goes by, things actually appear different. This is a black brush now. That's a green one. We now sell the white one. So companies change and companies go out of business and just things change. Extra quick stops. Some of these are hard as a rock, never been used before. Uh, you sh definitely should have a screwdriver. You should have a Phillips and a screwdriver, Phillips and a flathead. So this mechanism came with my clippers a long time ago and you can switch out from both. You want to be able to have this kind of tool because you're going to take your clippers apart. You're going to need the flat edge to pop that middle off where your blade goes onto if it ends up popping off on flat to your clipper. And then you want this side to actually take the bolts off, the screws off of your clipper. I got tiny pliers here. All these little tools I've learned over the years to use. The tiny pliers are the big ones. Those can help put someone's ID tags onto the pet. Um, cat muzzles as well as regular muzzles, other muzzles, every kind of different kind of muzzle because each dog's muzzle is different. You can't just buy one muzzle and think it's going to work for everything. It's not going to work that way. I have these Wall 10 and 7F here. Those are brand new. I'm actually going to demo them soon. They've been sitting there for like months though. I have a couple D-matters here. These are like hooked ones. I've got a couple of those. I rarely use those, but I do use them every now and then. Extra groom loops. So you do the 18 inch or the, so groom loops are. So 18, 18 is the smaller one here. I use this way more than I use the large one, but the just depends on how big the dog is. On the table, I prefer to use the 18 inch. It really depends on how large the dog is, tall how long your arm is, your table arm, because if it's not very long, you're gonna need a short 18 inch, okay? We have our cone heads, I have two paper towels. I have some clothes pins, those are kind of important. Clothes pins are a great way to hang up product as well if you're out there on the road and setting up a booth and trying to sell stuff. You use clothes pins on a rope and just clothes pin everything to it. Um, I have all my blades right here on the table. I actually am trying to go through some of them right now and go and have, I had a bunch sharpened yesterday 
You're gonna sharpen your blades depending on how often you use them. If you're using them with a wet coat and stuff like that too, probably every seven months or more. Just depends on your grooming, okay? And how, if you're maintaining them well and how you're storing them. I have a basic lead. You wanna be able to grab it and go grab a dog if you need to. If it's running out the door, you wanna be able to have this lead. Some of them are required to have them in your pocket where you work. I have a tape measure, so if it, someone emails me and asks me, hey, Didi, will that clothing fit? I'll go measure, you know, or the pets on the table, or anyway, so tape measure really important. Such a cheap thing and so important to have. Okay, let me take a step back here so you can kind of see some other things. So here you have your big trash can, have one of those. Uh, I use the 30-inch table all the time, so if you need a table, they're on our website as well. The arms, they're all different different sizes you want to make sure you get a different size this is our large table that's electric i prefer the electric over the hydraulic that's a whole nother video it's already done and it's already out there um, i do have a protective floor there just so when i move that large table i i'm trying to be proactive in keeping things in good repair so i don't scratch up the floor too much okay so let's just stick with the tools, right? Um, let's now go to, before we actually go through the tool list together, let's go back here and look at some tools. So at, back here I've got, it's kind of needs some, I'm going through some stuff here. I'm always cleaning something out. So I have a grooming uh, dry table there. I hardly ever use it. Just do everything in the tub because it's one at a time. You have your conditioner, flea shampoo, flea spray, um, all kinds of different stuff that you might need. Parvo spray cleaner. Clorox bleach is underneath. Um, you have your anal gland gloves down there protected in a bin. You have more cotton balls and Q-tips here with the hemostat. You have your tearless shampoo, a brush that I only use in the tub because the bristles will actually start getting real soft because it'll the water is so damaging it ruins the brush. So use one brush only when they're wet, okay? Lubricant, extra lubricant, Pets Life Gel. Toothbrush, just in case we see some junk in the teeth you want to take out. Trash can back there. Um, what's this? Degrease shampoo. There's a different brand we're carrying now. Toothpaste, because we're going to rule that out eventually, but we still have it. Breath spray. Ear cleaner. Flea comb to clean the eye boogers out. You want towels. And you want, we keep all our, I, I used to fold a dryer. Okay, double K dryer. That's really important. This is my favorite. Everything's on our website again. Stairs, protective eyeglasses. I actually cover that up, I cover the dryer up with a towel. Okay, so that was just mobile. Great mobile dryer there too. Our towels are here, they're all clean in a big trash can as well. I decided wasting time folding a bunch of laundry was ridiculous. Just throw it all in, do the laundry, throw it all in to a bin and no one has to waste time folding it. All right, now. Cannot forget dog up stands. That's one of the most important things that I have created that helps my job go much faster. So thank God that I, those are here now. <laughs> Whew. All right, so let's now together go through kind of this email. All right, so if you want to take a break, go ahead, push pause, because I need a drink. I need some water. But I'm going to go ahead and read through the email that I kind of send out. Okay, so first of all, I just want to say thank you again for finding me, sharing my world with me, sharing our videos, subscribing, smashing the like button. All those things are so important when you're supporting a channel that you love. It's like supporting a TV channel that you love, a show that you love. You want everyone to, to make it uh, grow. You want it to come back. You don't want it to have one season and be done. You want to see this be successful. So the only, re the only way we can be successful is you sharing and helping us grow and meeting that demand okay um, there's a lot of ways you can share our videos on Facebook Twitter Instagram you can share them on everything you can actually share it to every person you know in an email hey guys watch this, this is my favorite show that kind of thing you can help us grow in so many ways so everything I do on YouTube is free to you right now unless you you know pay for YouTube red if you don't like the ads you don't get any ads with that and they still give us credit for a percentage I don't know how YouTube does its numbers I'm not really great at it but I don't know that those numbers are important uh, it means a lot to me. I do a lot of aggressive senior disabled clients. And so that's kind of where we, what we do with our business here. All right, so let me keep going. It's going to be, if you're watching our channel, grooming your own dogs, you have questions with tools, you can always email me. 
I'll do my best to get back with you probably within 48 hours. A lot of you that I've helped have let me know like it's pretty fast. Uh, we appreciate all the purchases that you make with us, donations as well that helps us help other dogs for free. There's only two of us, me and David, and I'm the only groomer out of it all. So only, to make such an impact, I can't do it alone. So some of you are like, why should we be donating? You don't have to donate. No one has to donate. But if you are donating, you know that I'm doing things great for other people because there's only so much one person can do. We have to do it as a team. It has to be a we thing. One person can't do everything. We have to come together and make, make things happen. And there's a lot of big dreams I want to do for people and for dogs and for animals and pets. And so I can't do those by myself. Okay, so I put together this list. It took a long time. So here we go. I'm just going to go down the list. Now you can go check mark all the notes you already made from my back wall. Okay? So the first one is dog up stand. Check. I recommend a dog up stand depending on the type of dog you're grooming. Make sure you measure. I don't want you to buy the wrong dog up stand. There's two right now, small and large. And the small one's going to be like that 5 to 9.75. I think I got that wrong. The small is going to, you're going to measure from the bottom of the belly to, or tummy, you know, measure from there, bottom of it, to the ground. You're going to do the small size at 5.75 to 9, and the large size goes from 9 to 15.75. So you've got to base on which pet you want to go with. It doesn't need to, f like the large, some of them, I just have it under there. I can actually put my hand through there. It doesn't need to be right against their belly, but when they go to sit down, it's going to help correct them. Like, oop, i got to stand back up. Something's in my way. That alone just really helps. It's not designed for holding your pet up the whole time you're grooming the pet. Okay, keep that in mind. The next thing I recommend is a table, grooming table. We did those videos on, man, I was grooming those dogs that are doing some little stuff, face stuff on the ground at home. No, I was hurting my back. I was like, I would not do this like for 10 years. I couldn't do it, man. Squatting and uh-uh. So get a grooming table. They're not that expensive anymore. And we can outsource them and affiliate link them to you. So just let us know which one you want to get. They're on our website. Many times I sell the 30 inch more than I sell like a 36 inch. That black one in the back room, that's a 36 inch. And 36 inch is really popular. A Husky can go on there. A Collie can go on there. Um, you probably wouldn't put a Husky on this small table, but I would. It just depends on that pet. So if you have a very wild pet, you're not going to put a wild pet on anything, right? So you're not going to put a wild pet on a 30-inch table. This is my small 30-inch table, and it's used for small dogs majority of the time to medium dogs. When I use the large table, it's great, but I still have to lean in more than I have to lean in on that small table. So if you write me, I will help you get the right table. Each table usually comes with an arm and a, a groom loop. The groom loops that come with the table, 100% of the time, we actually upgrade them to a groom loop that we have here and sell. That's because the one you see me using all the time is really pit, like pinch and move up and down. It's really easy to use with one hand. Those other ones are really cheap and great, but you have to kind of use two hands. It's kind of just a pain. When you're working with an animal, you don't want to be sitting there for too long just moving the groom loop up and down you're kind of like this is this is impatient I'm impatient moving this around because you want to move quickly a dog can jump off the table and hit the ground very quickly and if you don't have some kind of support system to keep them on the table just for that minute so you can grab them up then it might be a bad situation so you want to be able to react quickly and if you don't have a groom loop that's reacting with you you should up upgrade let me know so I, I on the email I actually explain like electrical table hydraulic table hydraulic is pumping and I actually have one in my grooming salon mobile and I hate it I mean that thing is like if I have to release it and bring the dog down it's like a pop and they go pop and bring them down and man sometimes it just scares everything so the tables are made you guys um, don't get mad at me for those tables and products that are out there they're out there and they're for us to use so go co contact the company if you don't like stuff Groomer face mask is so important because you don't know what you're breathing. Matter of fact, when you clean your house, when it comes to like change of season, you should be wearing a face mask because everything you're breathing in goes into your lungs and potentially can make you sick. So if you happen to notice at the change of season is when you clean your house and you get sick at that time, maybe it's because of the dust you're breathing in. So now let's take that into the grooming world. If you're cutting hair of any kind, why aren't you protecting yourself? All that dust and fine hair and the air is going straight into your lungs. And let's just say you're older than me. 
I would be like, oh, allergies are already affecting me more than they were ever affecting me in my 20s. And now it really bothers me to be in certain atmospheres or, or sorry, certain environments where it's really, really bad air. Like it really bothers me. I go home and feel like, oh, something really bothered me today. Let's get an allergy pill. Let's get lavender. Let's do something about it. But if I would have just used a face mask during some of those situations, I might have been in a different place, which is what I do now. I use my face mask everywhere. So I can't imagine, the other day I forgot a face mask mobile grooming and I couldn't imagine like, wow, what was I doing when I first started grooming? No one told me about a face mask and I, no one told me about it to begin with. I was just like, you know what? I'm going to start using a face mask. I have one since my childhood when we, you know, drive mopeds around. I was like, I'm going to start wearing that sucker. To protect and I'm glad I did that was about three or four years into my grooming um, maybe for three four years yeah that's about right and so all these years I've worn a face mask what if I didn't man I wonder what my lungs look like we were at Pasadena California and there was a, a old-time groomer uh, she's been grooming 30 something years she has her own salon she's up there selling scissors and she said I have black lung I have it and it's my lungs are fucked is what she's like I was like really and you know she you know old school folks they, ha they have a lot of wisdom and they usually say it like it is and she's like oh I'm fucked you know and I'm like wow really and it's just an eye-opener if you really listen to some folks who have been grooming a long time that it really can be a f uh, affect you the hair you breathing in small particles including like if you are in any other industry Haircut humans, there's lots. Of, matter of fact, they have, we have a barber next door, and the hair gets so thick it comes through the walls, and I have to sweep it up right here against this back wall. How does that happen? How does the hair accumulate back there? We're completely two different buildings. It's not grooming hair, it's human hair. So I'm telling you, you may not realize it, but hair is flying around and you are breathing it in. So I cannot reiterate how important a mask is. Get any mask, get the reusable ones, but whenever someone's shown me a reusable one and I've showed them a cloth one, we can both see that there's definitely a difference in the thickness of protecting your airway. It's what little you can do. I'm not a whole airway breathing expert, but I can tell you this is what little impact I know will make a huge difference in your lungs later. Gloves for hand protection. I kind of suck at this right now because I haven't used gloves and I haven't um, done enough reading until as of lately. So when you're using certain shampoos, when you're using, when you're, t I really need to get into that habit, just like I yell at David. I'm like, David, you know, wear a face mask, right? So I need to get into the habit where if I know I'm getting a, a dog from a shelter or when I'm getting a dog, you know, that I don't, like, you can tell the coat's really raunchy, been through some stuff. You should be wearing some gloves. So we have those on here for hand protection. Because every now and then you guys caught the videos where I'll be like, oh my gosh, my hand's itchy. And some people will be like, why aren't you wearing gloves? And I'm like, why aren't I? You know, I need to put them on my back wall. So keep that in mind. I've got a cleaner here, Parvo cleaner. Had a lady contact me yesterday and like a week ago. She told me she had brought home a, a family member brought home a, she's a groomer, I believe. And family member brought home a puppy with Parvo. And so now she's concerned about her house and we all know a little bit about Parvo. If you don't, go read because I don't want to be the expert on Parvo for you. I'm not a veterinarian. But I called a veterinarian that I know really well and their staff told me to tell her how to clean for Parvo. Whether you want to use Clorox bleach only or do you want to use a Parvocide or what do you want to use? Because you want to make sure now you don't get anybody sick because that's serious if you took a dog in for grooming and he got parvo what would you do <coughs> so <coughs> what would you do it's a lot to think about the staff at that veterinarian told me to tell her they would honestly double up this this company shut down for i think it was three weeks i could be wrong it was two weeks or three weeks they closed their business it was a veterinarian clinic here in texas because they had parvo and I decided that's who I was going to call because they had re recently been through that. What did they do? Parvo can still be there, but you have to really clean up and down, left and right. Every single thing needs to be Clorox bleached. And she said t to me, you need to tell her, her, even her yard has to be bleached. I'm like, wow. So then there's another thing. It's like 10 minutes has to be on the 
it has to be on, Clorox bleach has to be on that stuff for 10 minutes minimum to be effective. So I don't know all about this, but I do know that, so they said it has to be on 10 minutes, you know, so I'm getting advice from someone else to give to someone else. So that way I, I didn't want to give the wrong information and I haven't done enough parvo reading. I know it can live up to five years in the ground. So I know it's quite serious, but parvo side, cleaner. How are you cleaning your facility? Things like that are really important. Groomer eye protection. So when you're drying a dog, all man, for many years when I worked at PetSmart, for many years there was no mask and I was blow drying some huskies and some of the coats were so dirty. Sometimes we would even blow dry the dog before we bathed the dog to kind of get some of this stuff out. That blow dryer is so strong, we are blow drying it out and directly into our face, into our breathing, into our mouth, into our skin. I'm gonna do a one on face cleaning because I know how to really clean my face now, but I didn't know back then. I mean, you have embedded this stuff in your skin, in your eyes, in your mouth, okay? And if you don't think you have, I, I really don't know how to convince you that you are. So groomer eye protection, cover your eyes when you're blow drying a dog. Get ear protection. I haven't used ear protection, I'm not seeing that, but I've heard a lot of people say that their ears hearing has been affected by the loud grooming noises, you know, and I can see that the blow drying could do that. I have never felt it yet, but I wouldn't know until I probably hit my 80s if I live that long to see that I should have wore ear protection. So I have heard that, so I have that on our website as well. Again, myfavoritegroomer.com slash shop, where all this stuff is on there. If you don't know how to navigate it, watch the YouTube channel video on how to navigate Dee Dee's online store. That way you know how to work with it. Because it's really hard to work with on a mobile phone. You have to scroll a lot, okay? And you have to click the, the brown, white drop down menus. All right, groomer apron. When you're bathing a dog, have a apron. Otherwise you're gonna be soaking wet. And when you're grooming a dog out here, have your smock on under the apron as well. Out here wear your smock, okay? That prevents I just recently stopped wearing shirts and clothing because I'm just tired of throwing them all away. So I wear a smock and I don't have a shirt underneath and my bras, I throw them away about every two and a half months. It's just what it is. I get cheap bras and I throw them away because hair gets in everything, everything. I'll groom a dog today and I might have this smock on, but there will be hair in my bra and it's out of here. Um, there's hair in my socks. I, my socks are probably gone every three months. I get new socks. So it's a lot of trash. You can't get the hair out of your clothes, okay? It is what it is. So the clothing I wear is, these are actually pretty expensive Nike pants, I think. They're great. They haven't allowed the hair to impact them. So I love the fila. They're actually fila. They're actually great. Um, but come summertime, they're really hard to wear because they're like winter, kind of winter. So I've constantly ch changed my attire over the years so many times. I've tried everything and I finally realized, just stop wearing t-shirts, man. Just wear your smock. Um, depends on where you're working, okay? So the next thing is clippers. We covered that and it's 5B clippers. There is another cheaper option that we're carrying. It is a brand new clipper. It's called the EBC Pro Animal EBC Andis. So that's a more inexpensive clipper. You're going to lose some of the power. You're going to have a very sh a much shorter uh, extension co uh, cord to it. So you can put an extension cord to it. It's for those pet parents doing the grooming at home. That's going to save you some money there by buying a, a cheaper product. But I always say, you buy cheap, you get what you pay for. So you're going to lose some. If you never use a clipper anyway, you're not going to know this is difference. But if you've used an Andis 5 speed, you would not go to the EBC. Okay? But everyone has a different budget. So you have to be out there for everybody. Now, clipper care. Uh, you definitely need to take care of your tools. So we have a clipper kit. And clipper care kit and that's the uh, spray the brush and the oil so that's what I recommend getting okay you'll get a little tiny bit of oil when you buy brand new clippers but it's not gonna last you forever the guards I rarely I didn't talk about the guard but here's my blades and then I carry I work I use these three guards one two and four all the time and I've sold everything else I've sold uh, everything used out it's gone so I would normally have a whole guard kit because I like using my five guard. There's a lot of big space in there. You can bring in skin, but if you know how to use your five guard, you can use it in a few different places that really make life easy. And the Oster set for guard set comes with a huge two inch guard. So that leaves the hair really long. And when you use a guard, it's an even cut throughout. So you don't have to do hand scissoring and go over and over and over it. 
you know, because sometimes you swipe it too hard on this side, too less on this side, so it's not completely even cut. That's why you're going to use your guard. It helps with that. However, when you're using the guards, you need to be able to comb through the hair, literally. You have to use a comb to comb through the hair or the guard is not going to go through it. So that's key. You have to waste the time to brush the coat all the way out first. Okay, that's, that's definitely a key. I use a 10 blade, which comes with the Andis 5 speed. I use the 10 blade on underneath all the guards that I use on the clipper. So some of you out there are using a 15 blade and a 30 blade. I personally, I'm not going to buy all these just to use it with my 10 blade or my gar guards. Okay, hold on, I'll be back. Okay, so we can kind of merge that. So one of the things that's really important to do is that when you're going to use a guard, I personally use a 10 blade. Why get all these other blades, 15, 30, and all that, right? Just use a 10, it works. Everyone has their own opinion, everyone has their own style. I would rather just have a bunch of 10 blades that I can use in different areas instead of having a 30 that I never use unless I put it under a guard. So that's the difference between the way I think and other people might think. So I have a 10 blade and more than one 10 blade, okay. So if you are using a 10 blade to do a summer cut, but when you turn on your clipper and you get it running and you uh, say take over an hour to do just the haircut, right? Because I've been doing this a long time, so I can do like that one quick, fast shave down in 10 minutes. I mean, that is, I'm working quickly. So you're not working as fast as I am likely. You're working with your pet at home, you're taking your time, you're being easy, you're kind of new at this, you're doing it slowly and that's all good and dandy but your blade is gonna get hot. The friction of the blade moving back and forth and cutting the hair is gonna get hot. When metal and metal rub back and forth, it will get hot. So you want to, when I first, this is gonna be really cool because I never talked about this, but when I first started grooming, that's what we did. We would be shaving, 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 hot. Use the, you would spray your coolant. We used so much coolant. We probably went through two or three bottles a week per groomer. I mean, we were, freaking cooling everything and it really annoyed me how often my hair the hair of the dog would stick into my blade why because you are either oiling your blade which that which if you've taken any blade sharpening training they tell you to oil between grooming dogs and I can tell you right now it would bog down my blade if I oiled between grooming dogs it would just I would just be pissed uh, you're grooming and hair's just bunched up, you're stopping, you're stopping and cleaning and everything's oily and wet. Wet, oily, all that mixed with hair in a blade, it doesn't mix. It does not go well. So I decided, uh, there's a few things I tried, okay. First, um, ice, have some kind of ice and I've, I've told some of you this, but water around a blade in any way, shape or form will rust your blades. If you are grooming next to your bathtub and you notice your blades are always rusty, that's because the humidity in the air from being so close to water has rust your blades out. There's a blade it's called Geeb, G-E-I-B. I do carry them. I don't think they're on our website. That's why you always got to reach out to me. There's things I have and I don't put on there. It just depends on how they sell. I have been asked to carry those blades a long time ago and it's because they don't rust as fast as others. I don't have that problem. I have some that have gotten rusty over the years and I can't even pull one out right now, but very rarely am I running into a rust issue. I don't work next to my bathing facility right there. It's in the other room, but every environment is different and where you live, the humidity is different. Okay, so I would be grooming a dog and I would be using this cool care all day. Shave, shh. 10, 15 times I would be sh spraying this on the, on the blade while I'm grooming one dog. Pain in the butt, I don't like doing that. What I do prefer to do, and what I decided to do at that point, it was like, within my first year of grooming, I was like, I am moving my money, I get paid for this dog, I'm taking some of that and I'm buying a blade. Every dog, until you have 10 blades, 10, 10 blades because tin is gonna be your most commonly used blade. So if some of you guys are grooming these dogs at home, I always tell you get two or three tin blades because if you're using a guard, if you're doing the sanitary, you go back to the face, you want a cool blade to put on there. If I've told you, a lady out of Hawaii, if I've told you put an ice pack next to where you're grooming, put a towel over it, a thin one, and have two 10 blades, right? One you're using, one that's hot that you have to take off. Put that 10 blade on that towel, real thin one, 
on the ice and that way it's cooling. Uh, something else that I did was if you've done any reading, study and analyze the things that you do and you'll learn a lot is that you get, I think it's marble, marble or granite. I think it's granite. It's been a long time because I did it for a minute and I was like, this is taking too long. If you have a countertop installed in your home, a specific type of countertop, it will actually take uh, absorb the heat from the pan that you're cooking with. So now you flip your mind and go, you know what, I'm going to go get that piece of tile and put that piece of tile, I think it's granite, and put it, check it, granite or marble, one of those, and put it next to my grooming facility, like over here. And every time I'm done with the blade, I'm going to put it on there and I'm going to have that rock pull the heat out of my blade while I'm working with the dog in a different blade. Okay. Um, it didn't work out because it's slippery on the tile and if you bump it or something like that it's just you're gonna lose a blade it's gonna hit the ground and then you have to get it sharpened or it might shatter the ceramic if you're using a ceramic blade so done deal the best way to go is to save your money and get several of the blade you use the most of and which is to me a 10 10 blade so here on the blades buy multiple blades there's a reason if you work on your dog for two to three hours, I promise you, you cannot do it with one blade. You will have to stop and rest and waste time. I have in my, right now, let's look together. Cause I know you're tired of looking at me. Um, that's a 10 blade. That's a 10 blade. That one has a little tiny bit of rust in there. Um, 10 blade. And I have a bunch being sharpened right now. So this is not my normal gathering of blades here seven seven so i have so right now and i'm not even grooming a dog right this moment one two three four five six and i yesterday we dropped off like i don't know i think i had ten blades sharpened yesterday so right now i have two four six ten blades sitting there and that's just half of my box so i'm telling you you're gonna want to use a lot of ten blades i'm not fluffing your feathers okay all right so let's go on to the next thing Told you this was gonna be a long video. Okay, now if you have an aggressive pet, let me kind of bring this down. Hope you guys can see my face when I'm talking to you. If you have an aggressive pet, some of the aggressive, some of the aggressive tools that I use are the aggressive, aggressive face tool, different muzzles. Don't just order one and anticipate it to fit. And if you are ordering it on our website, myfavoritegroomer.com slash shop, make sure you put it in the notes section of your order. Dee Dee, I'm going to be needing the muzzle I'm ordering for these breeds. And that way I can kind of go by what I already have learned, right? Which one you might need. Skinny snout chihuahua, you know, chubby chihuahua, um, 18 pound chihuahua, or what's another one? Pomeranian, they have a weird little muzzle there. Um, Australian Shepherd, you know, uh, Pit Bull, you know, so if you have the type of breed, I can kind of tweak whatever you ordered and make it work for you based off of my experience with the type of dogs I've had to muzzle during grooming. So muzzles, right? Cone head. Those cone heads I have are from my client, Miso's mom. Miso passed away and she would hook me up and get those from for me when she would go to Korea. I didn't say they were made in Korea, but that's where she would get them for me. I have not found the exact ones here. So we have ordered several different types from different companies and we carry the Velcro cone. The reason why Velcro works so well is that you don't want to have to use, today a guy was using a plier and I said, do you guys need a, a Velcro cone instead of a plier? You have to adjust this plastic thing with the pliers to fit the cone onto your dog. And she's like, no, Dee Dee, we only use it when we come see you for nail trimming, so it's okay. And I was like, okay, you know, no problem. But Velcro is fast. You can react fast. You don't have to get tools out and work with an aggressive dog and try to work with a cone that's just like, oh, we don't have time for that, okay? All right, so that's kind of there. Um, bathing. When you're bathing your pet, uh, I recommend that depending on the shampoo you use, so it's a couple different shampoos, let's go out here and talk about talk about some product together out here in the store area. So, let's go look at this. I've been talking so much, man. All these different shampoos, and we'll sell all this really fast. Okay, so we have gallons of shampoo down there, and we have the 16 ounces over here. If you write me and you tell me that you have 
uh, pit bull, I'm going to refer you to get a gallon of shampoo. The reason being is that if you go through this 16 ounce shampoo, you're probably going to use it up in two washes, maybe three versus, you know, spending a little extra on the gallon of shampoo, but having it around for six months or more. That's my, that's the route I would go. When you order shampoo, don't forget to order your gallon pumps. If you order the gallon, if you're wondering first to try the shampoo, then order your shampoo small first, order one 16 ounce shampoo, try it. You love it. Then you come back and order a kit which is the shampoo, conditioner, and the spritzer cologne, or co <clears throat> come back and order the shampoo, conditioner kit alone with no spritzer, and or order those in 16 ounces or gallons. But that would be why I would say, hey, if you have multiple dogs or large dogs, go with the gallons. If you have five Shih Tzus, I'm gonna tell you, go with the gallon. You're gonna spend less money in the long run. Pet Silk Care, and we sell everything, myfavoritegroomer.com slash shop. So, Use your tearless puppy shampoo for faces if you're worried about getting residue of soap in the eyes. And again, always have your eye wash. And so right now we are ha we carry the Esprit eye wash. I like the fact that Esprit uses uh, the oils, essential oils in their product. That's something I really, really enjoy talking about. Pets Life Gel, Oral Care Gel. You gotta go read about that, but you'll know why I have both of them. Ear hair powder to pull ear hair. You can get them in two different sizes. The stuff conditioner. And then we're gonna talk about some more shampoo situations here. So we're gonna go into, if you have a pet with some serious skin issues, I've decided to carry a brand. I'm pretty picky about these things, right? Uh, this is Mr. Wigglebottoms. And it is a certified cruelty-free, made in the USA vegan product. It has, uh, no sulfates, no parabens, pH balance, gluten-free. Certified organic aloe vera is our primary ingredient. So that is a shampoo that would be great if you think that your pet's skin is really having problems or has problems, a lot of hot spots, redness, irritations, constantly itching, things like that. I would be challenging you to check your dog food as well and not uh, not think it's just the shampoo that can fix it, but sometimes it's the kind of shampoo you are using. Okay, so bathing, again, we're going to talk a little bit about just mentioning the groom loops, the type of groom loop you have. We're going into the cologne. If, for me, when you use the colognes, what you'll find is that if you happen to use the shampoo, conditioner, and cologne of the same product, you will find that the smell will actually last quite a while. So if they don't, if you don't do the same product, you will see that the smell doesn't last that long. Okay. All right. So next thing, ears. So depending on if you have a pet that has ear hair, whether you're pulling them out or not, you're going to need the ear hair powder and ear cleaner and malacetic which is also sold in a kit. Okay. If you need the hemostats, I actually prefer the non-locking hemostats. So many times you can get close to locking in on hair and then locking the hemostats themselves and man, it could be a very dangerous situation, okay? Teeth care, we talked a lot about Pets Life Gel. That's something I really love. Uh, again, using essential oils to help the teeth. I've done so much teeth cleaning like teeth brushing I'm not a veterinarian so I'm not doing teeth cleaning but what I mean is brushing the teeth and what I would find is that the teeth of really old dogs is not in the best of care and they're not going to have a dental anymore so pets life gel is a great way to squirt this gel right on the teeth at the gum line over and over regularly follow the bottle label here and you will see not only the smell of the breath is going to start to change and smell deliciously like peppermint but the body is affected as well I had one client who ordered it said wow you know my pet would kind of have this light vomit every morning other things could be going on there but after the pet's life gel in general she said he stopped doing that isn't that interesting but the teeth are proven to have a very huge difference but just the gel and that to me we are getting rid of brushing and we do carry toothbrushes still but Toothbrush is like a dollar or something like that. Like we still have the toothbrushes here. 
but if you run into a lot of senior pet care, which we do here, brushing senior pet, pet's teeth, it can cause uh, some irritation, open up the blood bloodline, and I don't like to do that because there's a lot of bacteria in the mouth that needs to be cleaned out. Okay, so now we're coming over to some of the de-shedders. And so, for a large dog, the Zoom Groom, again, has got a great de-shedder brush. And same thing for cats, same thing. We have the uh, mini kits on our website, so make sure you check out the kit section at myfavoritegroomer.com. Just go to the shop and click on the kit section. And then, I feel like I'm missing one of these here about talking about shears. I think that'll be the last thing I actually kind of talk about. Left-handed shears? Left-handed shears. Yeah. Bathing, near care. Where's the shear section? Oh, here we go. Scissors. Okay, so scissors. I recommend if you haven't worked with scissors, you're going to start off with our scaredy cut scissor. This is a safety scissor to me. You can still cut anything with scissors, right? I mean anything. Your finger, an ear, so you still need to be careful. But with these guys, there's a guard on the scissor. So if you do it right and watch the YouTube videos on how to use this product well, you're going to find that it's going to be one of the safest shears out there. There's no scissor that's not going to cut, okay? So you want to practice first and tr take a training class. I mean, come and take a training class. You want to start cutting your own dog ear, you might, you might cut your dog, so be careful. You don't want to just start off with some scissors like you know what you're doing and then cut the dog's eyelid or something like that and, <laughs> and hurt the dog, okay? The next <laughs> An thing eyelid, is, really? Okay, it could be what what... Nick the nose, that rear, an I, ear, an ear, an cut ear. the ear. Another safe, safer shear is the bubble tip. So you have a kind of a safety tip there. And these are on our shear kits as well. So you can get a couple different shear kits. And some of the brush kits come with some of these if you choose it. So this is safer around the eyeball area where it's got that bubble tip because if it's really sharp and the dog moves, it can go right in the eyeball, okay? You never know. So. Uh, if you're starting out with shears, start off with some light equipment to get you used to it. And that way, if you you know buy a $70 pair of 8.5 shears, you're not like, you know what, I just don't feel like I'm ever going to use those. Then you didn't waste your money on that. You tried, to, you tried to move into shears slowly, okay? So use a scaredy cut tool, come move into your bubble tip, and then come into your other shears. So now we're carrying left-handed shears as well as right-handed shears. And wow, there is a difference. Okay, and then we talked about the nail trimmer. So we have the two different sizes. We have the large nail trimmer and the small nail trimmer. So that's kind of it on our product list. When you're starting out to be a groomer, that's kind of where we want you to start off with. Those major tools are gonna to help you become a better groomer, work with your dog, and be able to accomplish the full groom start to finish. And you may work in stages, buy some, try it out, buy some more, try it out. But if you have a handful of the right tools from the get-go, then you will save a lot more money than just randomly buying stuff at your cheapest supermarket so that you can start doing it and then they don't work for very long. I've done that a lot. I've replaced a lot of clippers from our local stores uh, worldwide um, into the Andes 5 speed. So it's a big difference. You'll be much happier with the right product. And just make sure you maintain your shears and your clippers. And if you need any of this advice or email me, you know, if you need any help or advice, please email me. Let me know. I'm here for you. Go to myfavoritegroomer.com, contact us, shoot us an email, or shop with us too, myfavoritegroomer.com slash shop. And I hope I've covered a lot of information and more than enough for you to get started on what tools you need in your household or in your grooming salon to get started doing the work you need to do from start to finish on a pet. But I told you it was going to be a long one, man. All right, thank you for watching our show. Thanks for supporting us. Pick up your dog up stand at dogupstand.com. Don't forget to pick up your grooming apparel at myfavoritegroomer.com under the apparel section. We'll talk to you later.